As you've probably already noticed from the title of this video, this is not my usual, not me going out hunting ancient forgotten temples. This is all about a single man and it is his story. Mr. Lamb is someone I met on my travels, for I travel extensively and it's oh so often in my travels that I hear about the incredibly sad history of Cambodia and Mr. Lamb's story is both tragic, sad but also very compelling for his heroism because it was in these very fields of Siem Rip that Mr. Lamb first heard the Khmer Rouge. They came down the road here firing their guns and their rockets and it wasn't long before they took over. They forced people into the fields, they gave them a starvation diet. They even took the school over and turned it into a prison camp and a torture chamber. Mr. Lamb has witnessed horrors. He has seen people die and be murdered in these very fields. And when he was an adult, he was then recruited by the government forces. He was trained and he was sent to the Thai border and that's where his war began. For the next five years, he fought solidly every single day, without a single day off, fighting the Khmer Rouge to take back his country. His story is quite simply amazing and that's why I have recorded it. Now if this interests you there is other videos on this channel. I've put the links below. Uh, one is of Pol Pot's secret bunker where he spent his last days. Another is of the Khmer Rouge and Pol Pot and a wider look. There's even a video about S21, the prison camp in Phnom Penh, which we mention in this video. But for now, I offer you the most incredible film I have ever made. And it's all down to one man's heroism. So if I may introduce to you a hero. It was very recently that I bumped into a gentleman that introduced me to Mr. Lamb here. Now what Mr. Lamb is, is living history because this chap actually lived in this area and he is one of the few that is around today that we can speak to about what actually went on with the Khmer Rouge. History books are one thing but when you're actually speaking to somebody who lived through that history then you have to grab that opportunity with both hands. And it's people like Mr. Lamb that are so very important in all our lives because we can learn a very valuable lesson here. And that is the only reason that evil um, gets a grasp and succeeds is because people don't stand up to it. And it's when people like Mr. Lamb decide that enough is enough. They take a stand and they are even willing to offer their lives to stop the insanity. Then that is a tale that surely is worth listening to. And it's one that only amplifies what a debt of gratitude we owe to such brave people as Mr. Lamb. So thank you so very much, Mr. Lamb, for joining us. Yes, you're welcome. It's okay. Hi. We like the, uh, thank you so much for you uh, call me, enjoy, uh, inter interview with you. You want to know about the war history in Cambodian, my the country, Lamb, explain for you. Well, you're very kind. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Lamb has given me a brief outline so we can get right into the heart of this subject. And that is he grew up in this area. And it was in which year was it the Khmer Rouge came here, Mr. Lamb? Uh, 19... Uh, come to attack here? Yes. 1993. 1993. You see, this is what's incredible. What we're dealing with here is recent history. Uh, made the problem with the Khmer Rouge. 
Right, so what you say there is that the Khmer Rouge um, came into the town. Now, from what you told me before, is about 30 soldiers came in. Yes, about 30 soldiers or uh, 20 soldiers of the Khmer Rouge, they come to attack uh, in downtown Siemvia. Right, and there were government soldiers in place here, but they were overwhelmed. So the government soldiers retreated, they went back. Uh, yes, and uh, after the, uh, maybe about one or uh, two hours, and then the Khmer Rouge, they left back. Right, I've got you. So after a battle of approximately one, two hours, the government soldiers leave, the Khmer Rouge now take Siem Rip. Yes, and uh, uh, also the uh, Khmer Rouge, they attack Nailong and Siem Rip. And when the soldiers, you've already told me, they, they were using primarily AK-47s and also Sh shoulder held rocket propelled grenades Ro Ro rocket they call uh, they call uh, in english i don't know exactly and uh, they call bay 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 now that these they, they they go like this yes 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 they are, are what we would call uh, rpgs half half and uh, and uh, uh, 40 40 right yeah Okay, and when the Khmer Rouge take the town, it, it's a it's a short battle. That they have thirty men. They don't have any tanks or you know anything of that sort. They take the town. What do they do? Do they do they uh, speak to the people? Do they change anything? Do they do they steal stuff? What it? What, why did they come? Just the. Uh, some the Khmer Rouge, they still take uh, from the people look like the look like the bicycle because before no no motorbike. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. So the Khmer Rouge come and and what they do is they they, they take bicycles yeah. to, to, so they can get around. Yeah. Is that what else do they take? Uh, they 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 take uh, carry carry the bicycle. Right. right, and then after when the Khmer when the Khmer gone, police they come to look for the place the Khmer Right, so <laughs> basically it's what we call a raiding party. It's this small small group of Khmer Rouge, and this is the first time that he ever encountered the Khmer Rouge. And let's remember, this guy's life was to be radically <laughs> changed because he goes on to take them on. He picks up a gun and, you know, he's, he's going to put his life on the line. Um, so they come in as a raiding party, they take bicycles and then they go again. Yes. So that was your first ever meeting with the Khmer Rouge. Uh, and then what, when, how did, sh how did life change for you? That, how long was it after that, that you picked up a gun? Uh, I am uh, hold the gun to be the uh, soldier uh, from the 19 and the 87 until to the 1991. So you w went to war with them from 1987 to 1991. Now I will wholly understand maybe there's things you don't want to talk about, but can you tell me why? In 1987, you decide to fight them. Why? Why was that? Lam, mm, uh, I don't want to be the soldier, but the government they mafia me. Oh, they mafiaed you. They. Yeah. <laughs> they isn't that a great and, way of putting uh, it? Yeah. Is they 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 the government um, said you've got to join the army. Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh right, okay. <laughs> so what was that process? You were still in Siem Rip, I guess. Uh, the the first, the first, and uh, the government mafia me for uh, to be the uh, soldier. I uh, the gather outside Simriap maybe about two or three days 
I'm sure they bring me to the border. Right. So the and I absolutely love that expression mafia to me because I'm Italian from descent. So I know what it's talking about. Um, he's you're at home and um, the government soldiers come to you and say, you've got to fight with us. Yes. When the when the government army, the military of uh, uh, Cambodian soldier, I I like to uh, join with him. Right. Now, did you go through training? Yes, now I am yeah, go to the training. And how long how long did you train? Uh, about uh, training every in the morning AM. Oh, you the whole morning? Yeah. And what was the training? What was it? It was uh, using guns, the AK-47? Uh, no, uh, AK. It was the AK you yeah. used. And did they teach you anything else? Yes, they 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 uh, take me uh, training me everything for the uh, general commander. Right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, did you did you have a special job? Were you a radio man or something like uh, that? And uh, sometimes uh, when I uh, go to the near the Thailand uh, border inside the forest, the jungle. Sometimes I am the uh, supervisor also. Oh, right. Okay. So potentially something like a lieutenant, yeah, we I might have, say. I have oh, you, you had the sidearm. Yeah. You had the, the, the gun here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. So, yes, he would be a lieutenant <laughs> or, you know, a, a minor officer. You, you say that you're sent to the Thai border because that is where the government troops are. The, the government troops have been pushed to Thailand, is that correct? Yeah, correct. Right. And they pulled me to the, to the protection of the, near the Thai uh, border with the uh, with, with, with Vietnam soldiers. So you're on the Thai border with the Vietnamese soldiers. Yeah. But when you first saw the Khmer Rouge, it was here in Siem Reap. You were 12 years old. Yeah, 12 years. How old were you when you're with on the Thai border? Uh, maybe about uh, uh, 28 years old. Or... You're 28 years old. Yes. Okay, so we've got a difference there of about 14 years. Yes. And uh, from the 12, from the 12 years, from the 12 years old, I am. Uh, just to uh, check out from the Simbiap to the, my village. Right. So you just lived in your village, which is just outside Siem Reap. Yeah. Now, from that time, from 12 to 28, did you have any contact with the Khmer Rouge? Did the Khmer Rouge come to your village or? Uh, every single place. Everything? Everything played the Khmer Rouge come to attack and village. They, they, the Khmer Rouge attacked your village? Yes, also. And did they take people? Did they did they hurt people? Uh, no, 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 uh, made uh, uh, <coughs> the uh, torture the people, yeah, the Khmer Rouge uh, find look like the uh, Soldier, the government by the CPP, uh, Prime Minister Hun Sen, or uh, policemen, but for the population people, the Khmer Rouge cannot make. Yes. But I mean, did did they come? Did they take farmers' rice in this area? Yeah, they did. Yes. And w what would happen? Would you you would be in your village, the farmers, and the Khmer Rouge would come on their bicycles, I guess, would they? Uh, yes, the. Walk, walking. Oh, they would just walk. Yes, yeah. There's two, uh, two spy observers and look for the people. Right. So they, it, I, from what he's, what I've been told before, um, what I've been told before from Mr. Lamb is they would come in small groups. So when the first time the Khmer Rouge attacked 
sea and rear, there was about 30 men. And what they basically came for was to steal some supplies. They took bicycles, yeah. you tell me. But when they came to your village, and all every you know the farmers there. What they came to take rice? Uh, be be before from the from the nineteen seventy five. Yeah, but did did they did they take anything else from you? Uh, no. It was only rice they yes. wanted. Yeah, yeah. Did they take people to say you must go and work somewhere else? Uh, yes, they they mafia the people. They uh, made the heavy thought torture or made the or made the hill made the ditch everything uh, take the uh, the use the people uh, take the canal or steal from the uh, pagoda or monastery they make uh, for the uh, look like the flu flu the flu the flu the water water for made the rice Right. So, what, what you, they actually hurt the people. They, they, they beat the people to make them work. Uh, some, sometimes, sometimes the, sometimes mafia the people, and uh, who they, who they say, the Khmeru, he said, not sick. Right. So, <laughs> if you're sick, you're told you're not sick. Yeah. Because one of one of Pol Pot's policies was, in fact, he had many insane policies, Pol Pot. But one of them, it was all about self-sufficiency, and he even said that the the Cambodian people must be self-sufficient in medicine, and that is completely crazy. I mean, it doesn't even it's not worthy of explaining. It's that nuts. So if someone got sick. And there's no medicine. They they would say, "What? You're not sick. You have to work." Yes, and uh, the Khmeru he said, uh, "No sick." The Khmeru they made the uh, uh, work again. No who no work. The Khmeru they kill them. They would yeah. So if you don't work, you don't get food. Yes. No. 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 No work. No food. And people would die due yeah. to this. Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, the people they they die. The Khmeru kill them and they, uh, die by themselves. They sick because you don't have no you don't have no hospital. No, I mean it's they did they take the people and li make them work in the fields. Yeah, they they mafia the they mafia people. They make. Uh, Plant the rice, plant the manioc, and then collect. They uh, put the transport uh, support to the uh, China. Right. We'll, well, we'll come to China in a moment. So you, everyone here was forced to work. They were made to work. And could you tell me what was a normal day? What time did you have to start work? Uh, <clears throat> some sometime uh, about two or three day, I start work then. Right, but on a normal day, would do you? What time do you start in the morning, and what time do you finish work? So how long every day? Oh, okay, I understand. Yeah, in the in the morning in the morning a.m. Uh, <clears throat> Sometimes the Khmer the mafia, they cut the harvest, harvest rice. Yeah. In the morning, uh, about uh, five o'clock in the morning a.m. So you start at five o'clock in the morning, yeah. and let's just pretend it's one day. Let's say what's today? I don't know. So it's a Sunday. Let's say it's a Sunday. You've woken up at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Everyone has woken up at five o'clock in the morning. Everyone. How do you wake up? Does, it, does a, a Khmer Rouge soldier come round and say, everyone up, everyone? Uh, the, the people, the people, they uh, know, know uh, announcement already. The people, they make the get up quickly. Yeah. Because I play the Khmer Rouge. 
they're afraid of the Kemal Ridge, yeah. so that they know they've got to be up. Yeah. So everyone gets up. Do they have breakfast? Do they have any food before they start work? Uh, about like the Islam, I don't think so. No, <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't think so. But we have to ask the questions yeah. because people will be thinking, you know, what, you know, how, how did it all happen? So there's no food. You're in the fields. You're up at five o'clock in the morning. Um, around you, do you, you, do you have children and old people as well? Uh, yeah, they have the, they have the. Uh, small kid or uh, children uh, well also really and um, how how young would the youngest person be that you saw in the fields working about four or five years old wow okay so we have children that are four or five years old um and we have old ladies and old men as well you go into the fields and you're working the rice Whilst you're working, do you is there Khmer Rouge soldiers around you watching you? Yeah, the Khmer Rouge, the, the Khmer Rouge, they hold the gun. They they look for the people. They not make not uh, for the the make the job the Khmer Rouge robber. Right. So the, as they are in the fields, it's very much what we know from history. It's up at the crack of door. There's no food, there's no breakfast, and it's out. Every single person is out there with one purpose, which yeah. is to one the one thing is to grow the rice. Around you are guards. Do you stop at lunchtime? Did you actually get fed at lunchtime, I guess? Mm, uh, stop lunch stop lunchtime maybe around uh, two o'clock. Around two o'clock. So You've already had a seven hour, hold on, five to 12, five. It's a long, long morning. Yes. It's, it's eight hours, isn't it? Yeah. You've got eight, five to, you must excuse my maths, but I believe that's eight hours. Yeah. And then you stop. So does, at that point, does everyone leave the fields together and go to a kitchen or something on the, a hut on the site? Uh, the, the kitchen, the uh, people, they sat on the house. And there's a house yeah. where there's food. Eleven or twelve, stop work. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is at, 11, at twelve o'clock they'll make a sound. Yeah. So boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I understand. Okay, so you're in the fields, yeah. and then at twelve o'clock there's a dong, 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 yeah, dong, yeah, dong. Yeah, yeah. There's a sound, and that everyone knows to leave the fields. Yeah, and then and then the people they stop work, they come to. Right. Okay. And how many people would you say there was? Mm, maybe about uh, uh, ten people, or they, they, uh, um, more more than more than ten people. Maybe twenty or thirty. I'm not sure. Right. I, I imagine it would change depending yeah. on the day and the year. And when you sit down to eat. What what food was in your bowl? Uh, sit 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 down and uh, have have some have some tea, have some table also. There's chairs and tables. Yeah. But what's the food like? Is it watery rice or is it is there a bit of meat? Is uh, there? They uh, they made the the cook they cook uh, they cook the rice. It's only rice. Yeah, only rice. And is there enough rice? Do you feel full or are you hungry all the time? Uh, sometime, sometime when, sometime when the night time, night time, I'm, uh, go to with the, uh, I don't know, maybe about 12 or nine years old and forget. And then I uh, go to, uh, they have, they have the torch, you know, torch. Torch? Yeah, torch. Lights. Lights? Yes. Uh, with fire or electric? Uh, look, 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 look for the bird. Oh, the torch. Yes, yes. torch. Look, look for the bird. There's something by crossbow. Oh, right. And then I'm um, carry the bird. When, when after they come back, uh, uh, made the cook, 
the, the bird and the night time upstairs eat with the maru. Right. So you um, would have some rice in the day, yeah. but you were still hungry. Yeah. So at night time, um, what time did you finish work? What time? Because you started at five in the morning, I believe. And then you break at 12. What time do you stop work in the fields? Uh, uh, stop work in the field uh, from the uh, morning a.m. 5 o'clock until uh, p.m. Uh, 6 o'clock. Right. Okay. So that's, that's a 13-hour day. Yeah, 13. And how many times do you eat in that day? Mm, in the... In the afternoon, evening, only uh, two uh, times. Only twice. So only time. you eat at 12 and you eat at 7, I believe you say you yes. stop. But then you just mentioned that in the night time with a torch, a hand torch, yes. you go out with a crossbow and you shoot the birds. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not shooting the bird, but I, I, follow, I, I follow the people, they hold the crossbow. So the bird, I carry the bird. You carry the birds, yeah. and that that's to give you food, yeah. so you can survive. Um, are, the, are the Khmer Rouge soldiers with you when you're hunting? Yeah, come with me, but they, they not they not kill me. Yes. So what they it's the Khmer Rouge shooting the birds. Uh, they, the Khmer Rouge, the Khmer Rouge, they hold the hold hold the toy. <laughs> they they do the easy job. Yeah. And but, then, right, and okay. Then come and carry the bird. Yeah. Uh, one uh, Cambodian uh, population, one people, about maybe uh, tall, two meter high, two meter high. They they hold the they hold a crossbow. It's something the bird. Right. So it's a big crossbow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because if you know, I know a little about crossbows. A longbow um, was an exceedingly big weapon. They're not small crossbows. So th they hunt the birds. So I'd imagine the Khmer Rouge get most of the meat from the bird. Yes. Is is that right? Yes. The, and the and, rice. Yeah, and they give you some. Yes. They they they, they give me the uh, some. Some bird upstairs, they uh, come back. They cook, they cook the bird in the night time. Eat all together. Yes, but you you have your you have your second meal, which is at seven o'clock. You say was it eight o'clock? You you finish work at yeah. Uh, finish finish my job around maybe about uh, ten or eleven, twelve in the night time. Right, so yeah, they, uh, they go to uh, observation to spy, look, look for the bird. Look for the bird, they yeah, shooting uh, the bird, made the food, eat in the night time. Right, so early evening, you stop in the rice field, yeah. and then it's to try and get more food. Yes. So the Khmer Rouge take you out, and with a big bow. You shoot big, uh, big, to, big crossbow. Big crossbow. Yeah. You shoot to get the uh, to get the birds. The Khmer Rouge take most of the meat, yeah. but they give you some. Yeah. And then you finish at eleven o'clock at night. You say? Uh, maybe about after <laughs> made the food for the the bird. They cooking a bird done. Yeah. And around maybe one o'clock. In the morning. No, night time. Yeah, well, yes. So from twelve o'clock to one o'clock. Yeah. But you, you have to get up because you've got to go to work at five o'clock. Uh, so you, you, well, you're not getting much sleep, are you? I, I, I believe I remember my, my, uh, my time. I know. Uh, I, uh, I know the time. Uh, they get up really, not, 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 not sleep a long time. Yeah, so it's, it's, you're, you're getting maybe four or five hours sleep. Yes, of course. And all of the rest of the time is not sitting down, it's, you're working. 
I am um am work work working all all the night time with the with the Khmeru also. They 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 the the Khmeru they cannot uh, make the uh torture me or uh sim accent. He cannot. He, he like me. Did I mean people would have been very sick, people would have been very tired, people would have been very hungry. And some of them wouldn't have been able to work. Did you see people that were tortured, that were hurt? Yes. Uh, mm, sometimes, sometimes um, I see the I see the Khmeru, They made the uh, heavy torture. Other uh, people also uh, look like the men and women. Uh, uh, look like the husband and wife, or, but the Khmeru they cannot do like this. And uh, after the Khmeru, they uh, put the gasoline, the fire. They they put gasoline. Gasoline and here, and then the Khmeru uh, bring the lighter fire. So they would take people and basically set fire to their heads. Yes. Right. I've I've read an awful lot of history, and I've never heard of anyone doing that. Um, I I I see I see the Khmeru. I explain for you. I'm not I'm not like you. If I, I cannot see, I cannot explain. No, I I understand. I understand. But it, it's 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 just horrible, isn't it? I mean, what why? Why would they do that to someone? What what did that person do wrong? They 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 they, they put the gasoline the head for the for the woman. Oh, they did it to the woman. Oh, okay. I think I understand. Her. Is did one of the Khmer Rouge soldiers want to be with the woman? Yes. And the woman says, "I don't want to be with you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so then the soldier and 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 the, and the woman they. The Khmeru, they uh, made the uh, uh, fire the here by gasoline, and the women they they cry and the uh, strong uh, voice. Right. Yes. Yeah, so she cries a lot. She done made uh, she done made uh, some accent to me, and the 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 the, the, the woman he said like this because. And uh, uh, when Lam I live in my village, and uh, the school look like the look like the jail. Yes. Yeah, the, the the jail they make the torture prison the people, in the my village. No 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 school for the student, only only school for the jail. Right. So they made they made the. And this is very much like S21 um, in Phnom Penh, where they turned the school into a jail and a, and a torture house. And um, how many people were kept at the school? Uh, made they torture the people, the Khmeru. About fifteen or twenty people, I don't know. And what happened to those people that were kept in the school, which is now a prison? Mm, they happened this. They happened the school, and they, uh, uh, right now, right now have the school, but they, before the Khmer Rouge, the culture knows no school. Right, but they they used the school as a prison, yes. Yeah, they 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 they, they use the school for the prison. And how how would someone end up? Why why did what was the reason? Why were people put in the prison? Why did they why did they get put there? Uh, I don't know. It was just they were just taken. Yeah. And do you know what happened to them when they were in the prison? Uh, I I don't uh, I don't know uh, I don't know everything, also like this. Right. So you don't know what happened. Do you know if people died in the prison? 
jail, but now I, I I know that someone died in the jail and the prison. The Khmer, Khmer Rouge, they made the torture maybe about uh, 30 people or something like this in the school. Right, so it, it's a bit like, you know, S21 in Phnom Penh, where they took people and they tortured them and they killed them and so on. To enslave? Yes, to enslave. Yes, exactly that. Um, so you're in the fields. You're working amazingly long days. You're hungry, you're tired. Yeah. Right, but, but how did you, how many years were you doing that, it, working in the fields? Mm, uh, maybe about one year. About a year. Yeah, about and, one year. And then you stopped doing it. Yeah, and then I stopped. So what did you do instead? Uh, instead, I want uh, <clears throat> to uh, find another job. Even the uh, night time, they cut it and the land carry, carry and the land. They put look like the look like the ditch. Oh yes, for water. Yeah, I'd imagine yes, because there's big, big works, big yeah. jobs where they make, they, you know, they're doing the canals, for the, the ditches. Yeah, yeah. For the flu, uh, it's meant for the, for the rye or something like this. Right. Yes. So for the water to grow the rice, yes. these big projects, yeah. um, which is what Chairman Mao and other people did, and guess what? It didn't work. You know, because collective farming never seems to work. Um, so you're working the fields and now you're moving earth. This is this is difficult work. This is heavy work. Yes, very very heavy very we work, very uh, we heavy job and very sad everything. Well it, it, you say sad, why is why is that? Uh, sad sad I mean sad I mean the the job not easy yeah because you're moving you're digging ditches are you doing this are you still working the same long hours are you still getting up at five in the morning and working till seven eight at night uh, yeah I'm still I'm still, still doing those hours and you're still only yes. reaching only rice yes and there's not much rice no not much rice so and again, it's the same thing. You you have the soldiers around you, and they beat people sometimes, and they hurt people. Yeah, the uh, 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 the the people they the people they working. The Khmeru they hold they hold the gun. Uh, the culture look who they not not good work, and not the very bold. The, the Khmeru. Hide them, bring them to kill them. So if someone isn't doing enough work, yes. then quite simply they're killed. Yes, because uh, uh, they, they, they someone they they take care for for work for the for the mission the Khmeru. So I bet the Khmeru kill them. Good God! So everyone is living in total fear because yes. anyone can be killed. Uh, Everyone they are living in the field, they, uh, all the the kill the people. They also. And was it anyone? I mean, if you're a child or if you're an old person, a man, it doesn't matter. They will just kill you. Uh, yeah, the who they have, the child they have the kid. Uh, they bring them below. Him also after they made the right here sometime the Khmeru they uh, take the uh, kid they fight the fighting with this and then uh, they kill uh, mother father also so they kill the child and both the parents yes the the, the, the both and the uh, parent also because this is the lama I, I, I saw. You saw this. You saw this yourself. Yeah, I, I saw it by myself. I saw the. Uh, I saw Khmer. Good God! And how old was the child? Mm -hmm. I tell you already about five years old. Oh, my apologies. Five years old. Yeah. Good Lord, that's 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 terrible. Um, 
so you, you you've gone from doing the rice. Yes. Then you move to after about a year, I believe, you go to doing um, the the ditches yes. for the for the water for the rice. Yes. How long were you doing that? Mm, <clears throat> about maybe uh, uh, two years. About two years, and. You stopped doing that. Did, did the Kemal Rouge say you now get another job, or did you? Uh, yes, they have, and uh, they have the many, many, many the job the Khmer Rouge. They, they, they yeah. Do. So, so they gave you a different job. What What was the new job after two years of digging? Uh, yes, they grow the uh, manioc. 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 What's that? Is that fruit? You, you know, you know the manioc, manioc look like the potato. Oh right, yes, yes. They call manioc. Yes, I know where you are. I, I see them all the time in the yeah, fields. Yeah, about I think. about maybe one or two hectare. Right. So it's okay. the same thing again. You you've gone from rice to ditches, and now you're doing a kind of potato. Yeah. And it's the same thing. You've got the guards. You're doing the long days. Yeah. You're almost starving. There's not enough food. Yeah. Um. And how long were you doing that for? Mm, uh, not, not, not so long time. Not so long time. Yeah, short time. Right. And did you have other jobs? Did they give you other work to do? Uh, so you, many, many, many the job for working. So you, you, because in my mind, and I think in many people's minds, is. What what we see is everyone just working in the rice fields, doing the same job for year. But what you, the Khmer Rouge, did with you is they would move you from different job to different job. Yeah, the Khmer Rouge, they they move me to another job, a job different job. Was it always in the same rip area, or did you did they put you on a truck and take you somewhere? In the uh, area and the village. It's always in the same area. Yeah, same area. And did you always have the same Khmer Rouge guides, uh, guards? So, uh, sometimes, sometimes they change the, the the new power. Yes, and you're in the fields for years and years. You're digging and you're working, and when you looked at the Khmer Rouge, the soldiers, did you see them fighting for power amongst the soldiers? So was, were the bosses changing? Because to be a boss in the Khmer Rouge is the only way you're going to survive. So did you see fighting in, inside the Khmer Rouge? Uh, yeah, some, sometimes sometime I, I see the, the Khmer Rouge, the people, they uh, doing the, uh, made the job look like the collect for the manioc and rice and the big uh, flu to the water made the, the rice field who they not not take care the, the Khmer Rouge, they take them shooting them and shoot them yeah. but did did the Khmer Rouge soldiers did did you get there was there new bosses was there fighting inside the Khmer Rouge you know were people trying to get more power uh, the people they get more the power. They mean of uh, one one percent. They 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 strong power. They call the uh, pol pot. Pol pot. Yeah. Yes. And how do you know how the orders for you to do um, for the people in this area to do the rice and to do the potatoes? How did the government, the pol pot government? Communicate. How did they speak to the the smaller Khmer Rouge in the field? Did they send letters? Did people come? Yeah, they send. Uh, they send letter. They send letter. People they, they yeah. come to join to work. So really, they sent letters saying we want um, we want this rice or we want this done. So was, everything was, was there, did you see radios, people yeah. talking into radios a lot? Yes, and the uh, different, different stand for the working also. Right. Different stand. Right. Did you see 
anyone ever show any kindness? Was there some Pope Khmer Rouge soldiers that were better than others, or were they all kind of the same? So if now I see the I see the Khmer Rouge, they're not the the the, the good man. I I. I I don't I don't think so. The Khmer Rouge good man. <laughs> no, so they were all bad. Yes, all bad. All of them. Yes. Well, that just goes to the, show you, uh, doesn't it? The, the the general, the name of the uh, Khmer Rouge, they call the Pol uh, Pot. But um, I don't know uh, about politics. They transform uh, uh, the Chinese or Vietnam. I don't know who. Right. But 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 but, but not sure for the. Uh, for the Khmer. Khmer, I think Khmer not, not kill Khmer. The Khmer kill Khmer. The, first of all, the plum I want to make the big yourself. And you want to make the uh, big yourself. And then, who they want to make the big yourself. And after they uh, fighting by themselves. Who's that? So can I ask you to come forward a bit here? Because we're, we're, we're losing the camera. There we go. You see, um, is who? So, first of all, you the one to be the general commander, right? Lam, I want to be the general commander. Yes. And the uh, by themselves, after the competition, fighting. Yes, that's that's what I'm saying. Yes. You've got it. Yes, is because with with all these type of regimes, and I've studied the Second World War a lot, and what went on with Germany, yeah, but, and there's always fighting inside yeah. because they want to be the general commander, the boss. They yeah, want to yeah. be the big man. Yeah. Now, we'll move on now to your days where you fight back. Is you're in the fields in Siem Reap. And mm -hmm. you're doing all this work. Mm -hmm. How do the, the government army contact you? How does the government army get hold of you and make you a soldier? What happens? Uh, you're working one day and they come <clears throat> to you? Yes, and uh, be, 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 because of that, and uh, they call the, they call the salary. Salut, yes. Yeah, ma market. Sa yes, salut I know market that. from the from the nineteen eighty six. Nineteen eighty six and the uh, Vietnamese soldier they, they call the they drink the fruit sage. You know fruit sage? No. Fruit fruit sage you mean the uh Banana, pineapple, or oh. the meat, or to get the yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they drink. They, they drink that. Yeah, they drink. I I have sell selling for my niece. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah. you okay? We're a bit further down the road. He's yeah. now he's now his own businessman. Yeah. He's selling and, he's uh, selling this juice. It's, it's there was alcohol yeah, in it. Say. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And then and then after that and we uh, call the. Uh, Coming in from the village, they call me. Oh right, so the the, the village chief, yeah. the, he calls you. Yeah, yeah, they call me to the to the office and to the uh, um, some uh, embassy. Yeah, uh, like the, and uh, say they they say you you now you've got to be a soldier. Yes. But the, there's the question that the people there are, are going to want me to ask, which is one minute you're in the fields working with the Khmer Rouge making you work, but how did you become free? How did you stop working with the Khmer Rouge, but now you're selling your drink? How, how did that happen? Did the, did the government forces push the Khmer Rouge out of this area? Yes, and... Uh... And the, the 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 government by the CPP, Mr. Gonsan, they put the Khmer Rouge run away. Right. So the the jump we have there is the they're working in the field. So and then the the government forces have obviously you know taken the territory back. And when they do take this territory back, they find you. 
<laughs> a brave man, <laughs> a, a survivor, because he's got through where others haven't. And they've said, you've got to fight with us. Yes. And as we've, we've mentioned, is you went through your basic training, you had a bit of training, and sometimes you would be, you would have to look after other soldiers. Yeah. You're a bit of a, a bit of a captain, a, a bit of an officer. And you tell me that you were sent to the Thai border. Uh, sent me the, to the Thai border, and uh, uh, the, the, the first, yeah, the empire sent for the living uh, with the, uh, the country village, you have the farm. Oh, so you were sent to a farm? Yeah, I have the farm. Right, and at that farm were soldiers, there was guns, there was ammunition. It was it was a camp, was it? Yes. Right, and how many soldiers were there? Mm. Uh, about maybe uh, 150 soldiers. Okay, so you, you go to this camp, there's about 150 soldiers, you've You've got a uniform by now. Uh, yes, when when the time I have uh, the soldier about the uh, one hundred fifty or two hundred uh, people soldier, I have the I have the uniform. Right. So you now look like a soldier. You're you're not the man in the fields yeah. who's getting a small amount of rice and watching these horrible things. You, you you're now trained. You've got a uniform, yeah. you've got a gun, and you're ready to fight. Now, when you... Sorry, can you move in a little bit for me? Is when... When... If you... If you can, we're just going to move you in. There we go, thank you. Is when you start your life as a soldier, what are you thinking? Are you thinking, good, I can fight back, or, you know... Uh, why that? Why that? I want to stop from the soldier because of that, and uh, uh, my uh, complete complete in uh, area, and the uh, lot of the landmine. Oh yes, there's a. I I know that from my own experience. Is there's an awful lot of landmines. Can I ask you? And anything you don't want to answer, don't answer. Please don't. But did you lose, you lost family members? Members of your family died, Arunj? Uh, Clam, I don't have no clear who killed my family, my, my uncle or everything. No. no. Oh, yes, because, and I think the reason for that would be is because he, you were in an agricultural area. He was a farmer. And these people were vital. It seems that the Khmer Rouge had a... <clears throat> A perverse way of, of killing those from the city. They they are the ones they saw as the intellectuals. So the the, the farmers and so on, as um, our dear friend here, you all survived, which was great. But of course, you had to work through hell. You had to work, and it's you saw people being killed in the fields. It was it's no small matter. In you're the now farm, in the farm. In the farm. Mm -hmm. You're you're now a soldier. You're on the Thai border. You've got your gun. Yeah. How long did you fight for? Uh, maybe, maybe five years. Five years yes. of fighting. Yes. Now, what was that like? Uh, right, right now, uh, I don't want to be the soldier again because I'm, I'm, I'm full now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've had enough? Yeah, enough. It was, it was, being a soldier was no fun. Yeah, five, five years enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what was, we've seen in your early life that a normal day in the fields or with the Khmer Rouge was waking up at five o'clock in the morning. It was working till early evening and then it was going out hunting just so you could eat and then maybe four hours sleep to do it again. What was your average day in the army? A lot of walking? Uh, when, okay, this is uh, very, very good 
uh, your question asked me, my uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. my my lam um, uh, answer um, is explain for you. Please. When lam I to be a uh, soldier, yeah, I am cooking also. Oh, you were you were chef. Yeah, I'm uh, cooking cooking food for 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 my uh, army. Yeah, and uh, after that, first of all, is the hospital they have the big problem for fighting and yeah. then uh, they they call me you know they call me yeah they call me they brought uh, fighting with the uh, you know you know tank tank yeah yeah tank yeah. tank and the CTP they they, they they go to fight fighting with the with the Khmer Rouge so the Khmer Rouge were causing problems here and the government army they bring tank yes so it's it's heavy fighting yes and also also my also the my 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 ear now ah. blow blow blame for, for for the for the hearing uh, no, no for the uh they call the uh big, big mine of oh, the tank mine yeah tank mine and and then the my my ear bled outside. Oh, you you've burst your eardrum. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, and then and then the tank <clears throat> too heavy, not not gone. Just only shake a little bit. <coughs> <coughs> then the. When the night time, after they to repair the chain. Oh, the track. Yes, yes. The, yes. The, the, the chain for the tank. Yeah. And the uh, victory for the uh, shooting big rocket, big machine gun. Right. Yeah, probably a 50 cal. So there was fighting around here. The tank hits a mine. No, not, not here, near, near the Thai border. Oh, no, sorry, my apologies. Near the Thai border. So you mentioned hospital. Is near the Thai border, it, it loses the track. Yes. And they have to repair that. Yeah. So you're fighting. Did you fight? Were you being a soldier every day? Because in our war in Europe, the soldiers would get a holiday. No, for the, me, not, not holiday. So for five years, yes. you fought every single day. Yes. <laughs> wow, <laughs> because that is a lot of pressure on your head and your body. But lam am lam am easy when when the I I brought uh, to the fighting with the uh, Khmer Rouge, and then always always the on the tank on the uh, CPP. Yeah. So they drop me. I go down. I walk, I walk fighting. Right, so the picture we have here is you've got this tank, um, well, tanks, and as they go down the roads, um, you've got soldiers sitting on the tank. Yes. And then when you get to a place, maybe there's fighting, you get off the tank as quickly yes. as you can. Yes. And then you take position. Yes. Around course. the tank. Of course. And yeah. that, that was the normal day. Move, uh, fight, move, fight. For 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 one day, we fighting. Yeah. For uh, some sometimes sometimes we busy. Uh, seven day also. Seven days fighting. Yes, yeah, seven day fighting also. Because what you're doing um, <clears throat> is you're going. You're pushing the Khmer Rouge back. Yeah. So you're always on the front line. Yes. Uh, 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 always the uh, after Lam I brought the, the, the tank, the fighting another play. They, they come back, stay with the with the, my play, my my camp. For five years. Five years. So you. Wow. But you you never get, uh, no, get. I want I want to be the I want to be the uh, general commander. But uh, I am uh, 
operate the mind. Yes. Because sometimes, sometimes Lam I, you know, uh, Lam I uh, tell you faithfully or uh, honest with you and not never lie. No. When Lam I to be soldier and uh, <clears throat> I have two friends, two, two friends, the, the good friend, you know, soldier yeah. with me. And then <clears throat> uh, the first, this is the road, this is the way to the the big part hole. Yeah. For the take the water for the cooking rice or something like this. Yes. But <clears throat> when they brought for the, the 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 fighting, and then my friend, he uh, look it look it on a tree, look it on a tree. She see the you know the small the small animal they call the uh, palm sweet. All right. Uh, they, in, in Cambodian, they call uh, sampo, right? Uh, palm sweet. And then I said, my friend, you don't you don't shooting them because uh, that why I don't shooting them because now for us they they fighting they fighting with people. You look like the I said him lie look like the my for a lie. I said like this, but he not listen to me. He's shooting, you know, he's shooting the, he's, the, the animal in the yeah, tree. Uh, Alamo, the, the palm sweet on the yeah. tree. Yeah. yeah. And then he walk behind me. Walk behind me, look like um, I come back. He walk, you know. Yeah. He walk and then he hit the mind. He hit, hit the mind that um, I tell him, but you not believe me. Yeah. Boom. But, but, but for me, no problem. And then after that, Lam I, I carry him by hammock, and the water like this, carry ghost. He 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 died he died by, by the the, the mind the Khmeru. Jesus, I'm sorry to hear that, yeah. but it's, is this, something. It's something you must over five years. It must have happened a lot. Yeah, of course. Yeah, everything I'm um, experiencing. Look like, look like the, look like the Buddha helped me. I, yes. I, I, I not, I, I not die. Yes. Well, I think in the story there with your eye, it was you know maybe a signal, a sign. Yes. To be careful. Yeah, of course. Maybe the grandfather you never met <laughs> was helping you. Yes. Because when I do my temples and things, I honestly feel that there's someone with me. Because I see some incredible things. <coughs> so, you fight for five years, and we're head towards the end now. Because there's an awful lot of pain in this. Do you actually, at the end, you've been fighting? You've, you've had an incredible story here with the rice fields and so on, and then you're with the army. You fight back. Do you actually, where does your war end? Does it end in Phnom Penh? Nine, nine, 1991. 1991. And where were you in 1990? Where was the end of the fighting road for you? Uh, Did you go to Phnom Penh? No, uh, stop, uh, stop fighting after that I ran from the uh, front line. Right. I, I ran. You ran from the front line. Yeah. So, so your where your war finished? Where in Vietnam? Uh, the, the, On the border. Sorry. Uh, the 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 war finished nineteen ninety one. Yeah, but w you you started on the Thai border. That's that's where your war started. Yes. You started fighting. Yes. But where where did you stop? This the the your they, last your last day of fighting. Stop from the my border. It stopped on the my border, Khmer border. Yeah. Right. And when it did stop, how did you feel? Uh, they feel. <coughs> they uh, they they feel. I I hope so. Uh, I hope so. Uh, Khmer not so strong. 
Yeah. Not not so strong. Uh, I I want to stop Solgira. Because the Khmer Rouge weren't beaten, beaten a bit like the Allies and the Germans. What the Khmer Rouge did was they retreated. They still had strongholds in the north for many, many years later. <laughs> but the government army had taken Phnom Penh. The government army now had most of Cambodia. Yeah. And now, after this incredibly long road of working under the Khmer Rouge, being saved, well, the area being taken back by the government army, then you become a soldier. Now you can stop fighting. What do you do? Do you come back to see him rip, I suppose? Uh, and uh, stop the fighting right now, my job. Before, uh, every single place, <coughs> always uh, practiced by the English. And uh, on the way to the Angkor Wat, yeah, they have the have the one Angkor Zoo. Oh, the Angkor Zoo, yeah. Yeah, zoo. Yeah. Now I work in the zoo <clears throat> about uh, one year. Right. After the zoo, one year from the uh, 2002, and the date of. Uh, August, right. Uh, uh, August the date of ten, I go to airport. Right, you work there. Yeah, I go to airport. I work for the big uh, company taxi association for transport. This one. Right. Okay. Yeah, this is my uh, this this is my uh, experience. This is your this is your yeah your your job and experience now. Yeah. So, it started when you were nine years old, when you you heard the bullets and the rockets. How old were you? When it stopped, uh, twelve years old. Twelve. No, when you were in the army. When did you finish fighting with the army? Uh, finished the finished the fighting with the army. I'm not a member. Maybe uh, about uh, thirty-five years old or something. So from about nine years old to your thirty-five years old. Yes. That's twenty-five years. 25 years. A quarter of a century. <clears throat> wow. That, that is a big part of your life gone. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, too many people think that the Khmer Rouge was something that went on for approximately four years in the 70s. Um, it wasn't. It, it's, these guys just never really went away. I mean, into the 90s. And it, that's why in testimony like this is so very important. For 25 years, your life was changed radically. Mr. Lamb, you've taken us from the first bullet you heard, the AKs, when you were nine years old. Yeah. And you've taken us all the way um, to your last days when you were 25 years older. And I, and I think I speak to those that watch, who watch this, couldn't be more grateful. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, it's been, it's been a day I will never forget. It's okay. Never. So if you want, if you want, uh, uh, upset that and uh, <clears throat> the police come back and uh, everything for the temple open and uh, COVID gone. Yeah. If you want to know uh, some about the. Uh, Story, like I do also. Yes. Because, so there you go. Because like I'm the study about the document history of the yes uh, temple belong my my friend uh, Cambodian uh, English teaching me also about his story. So we can put that into the thing here. Is is it, as I'll say, if you come to Cambodia to see the incredible temples, and that's something I cover on this channel uh, very deeply. In and if you want to meet Mr. Lam. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, in, you know, uh, sprinkle a few coins his way. Um, he would love to meet you, and the, and the way that you can meet Mr. Lamb and maybe engage him and learn some more Why, history 
is then um, is contact myself in the comments. Oh yeah. So, thank you very much, Mr. Lan. It's been absolutely wonderful. Yes, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Yes. Thank you. I'm not uh, pretty uh, clever about the uh, interview, but uh, I'm experienced work with a journalist also from well, uh, from from uh, uh, Canada. Well, you're you're a man that made the world a better place <laughs> because you put your life down mm -hmm. to get rid of the Khmer Rouge, oh, yeah. and we're all very grateful. So thank you, Mr. Lan. Yes. Thank you. Yes, you're